Because the closest airport to Tulum is Cancun, we had to take a bus when we landed. In order to get there sooner, we took a bus to Playa del Carmen and then transferred to Tulum. Once we settled in, we went to gather some supplies while stopping for tacos. In the afternoon, we biked to the beach. There was a shocking amount of seaweed that ruined the view. Otherwise, we did enjoy the cool feel of the water after biking in the heat. For dinner, we decided to eat some Thai cuisine along the beach. After going to church in the morning, we stopped by for a late breakfast at Burrito Armour. This restaurant was a popular recommendation online and by locals. It was relatively healthy and sizable and catered to a lot of dietary restrictions. Because we missed the one bus to Cova, we ended up taking a taxi directly to the ruins. We had a pedicab take us in all the way first. It actually wasn't as crowded as I expected for a Sunday afternoon. This Mayan pyramid is 138 feet tall, and one of the few left that you can climb, which is why I wanted to visit. We're about halfway. Halfway. <laughs> halfway. See you behind us. The steps are actually very steep and uneven. It was harder to get down, so we used the rope to safely descend. We walked back to the entrance and stopped through some other ruins on the way. Once we got back to Tulum, we had a late lunch at a taco shop near the bus station. For dinner, we ate at Heartwood, known for being the most famous restaurant in Tulum. It's completely situated outdoors and I loved the ambiance. I made the reservation here a month in advance. When you are seated, your waiter brings you a chalkboard menu with what's available as the menu changes daily. After dinner, we walked a few minutes down the beach road to end the day with gelato. On our third day, we caught an early bus to Valladolid, a city an hour and a half away from Tulum. We went to our first cenote right in the center of the city.
Afterwards, we quickly walked around the city before we took our next bus to Chichen Itza, one of the largest Maya cities. We ate at one of the few restaurants there before hiring a tour guide to get into the archaeological site. I was surprised to find only two sides of the pyramid were perfectly restored. Back in Tulum, we picked a place for dinner that served empanadas since that was what I was craving. It was Don's first time trying one, so I'm happy to have shared this delicious Spanish pastry with him. The fourth day was the rainy day on our trip, which worked out as we had joined a half-day snorkeling tour. Our first tour was at Dos Ojos Cenote. Dos Ojos is part of the largest underwater cave network in the world and is two cenotes connected by an underwater passageway. I was glad we joined a tour, which ended up being just the two of us anyway. The tour provided us with wetsuits and flashlights. It would have been difficult to navigate without them. The second cenote we went to was Grand Cenote. You're required to shower before entering the area. Luckily, there's a line through the cenote that can help you if you're not a strong swimmer like me. There are also some baby turtles chilling around too. We ate a light meal after snorkeling because we were both lightheaded after the tour. Guys, if the camera is shaking, it's because my knees are shaking. We caused the table to shake. But that's part of a special effect. We rested the whole day afterwards due to the rain and because we were both getting food sick from something. But that didn't stop me from trying this hole in the wall empanada place nearby. gonna take goob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> goob. 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 Come on, goob. Make her feel better. On our last day, we spent the morning eating breakfast and doing some shopping. That was all we could do before taking the bus to Cancun Airport. Oh.